This is an example of the older style Primus stove. Um, and as you can see, the bottom attachment points uh, are similar to the more modern version. But because this housing has this flared design, these leg points here obstruct a direct vertical uh, direction, except at some very few points. Unfortunately, when those points are reached, kind of similar to what you see here, uh, the stove won't self-support itself. It tilts. There's a fairly simple fix for this. This is a bottom part of a pop can that I just basically use some simple scissors to cut this out. This weighs four grams. And this can be placed underneath this. And at that point, it will support it enough for preheating purposes using this modified chimney. That little piece of metal can be left in place even as you then are getting ready to put the stove into its final position for cooking purposes, it will not interfere. In fact, it's, it's not, it doesn't even contact the stove. But it, it's a minor uh, alteration that is required for this older stove. But I have found that this tighter chimney modification produces a more efficient startup routine requiring a very small amount of alcohol as a priming agent. So I think that this carrying this little piece of metal, which I suppose to be just placed inside this and then into the back into the pack that this thing normally comes in would not take up much space and the four grams probably would not be noticed. This is the older MFS version, and because of the wider bell design, you can see that I've got it sitting on top of this little coke piece to stabilize it. And I've moved the legs into a position to where the inner portion clears this outer margin. There's this extension here. It's got a couple of tabs that I made for it so that I can position this at a couple of points, and it will contact this bent over point here. So. For this particular stove, this requires the furthermost uh, tab to engage in order to hold it in place and also wrap around the entire housing. Like that. This is what this prototype looks like. The legs are moved out so that the chimney can fit in between the legs. It has a large cutout at the bottom, but again, this is made from spare pieces of titanium foil, and I use what I can get my hands on. But sometimes these uh, various uh, changes, such as this gap here, is still useful. It gives me some information. These chimneys already are very tight and when they try to start up there's a usually a yellow flame that is associated with incomplete combustion, not bad preheating. I'm going to go ahead, it's pretty breezy today, I'm going to go ahead and put in one cc of denatured alcohol into the priming pad. This is going to be white gas, Coleman fuel, whatever you want to call it. And start it up. And we have heat. Oh, well, that's great. They're supposed to fit. Again, these are all spare pieces of whatever I've got on my hands at the time. A little bit like the nine pieces of eight 
in pirates. Whatever I happened to have on my person at the time. Anyway, uh, I'll let this go until it burns out and then um, go ahead and light it. In the past, I found that uh, when I, these chimneys again, these particular designs are becoming more tight so they contain more of the gases, that this is becoming such that uh, I'm beginning to ask myself whether or not I'm getting these too tight. This one is a, again a, a hybrid. It's the original one that I had set for this was for the uh, MFS EX stove, but I put another piece in here so that it would expand out a little bit so that I could now use it for this. Let's see what happens if I try to start this up. All right, we have ignition. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove this lid. As it seems obvious that I, I, I don't think we're going to have much in terms of any kind of yellow flame. I'll leave the uh, collar in place for just a little bit longer. Just to be sure. But I think we're okay. So let me go ahead and take this off. Oh, that gets hot. I don't have my hemostat with me, which is one of the reasons why this is not a great idea. You really need to have something long to get your hands on this. Now, you'll notice that the legs are not completely open because that's, if you open up all the way, these inner portions come in too close and the chimney won't fit. But it's not that hard to uh, put the legs in place even while the stove is running. Well, that's all there is to that, uh, including getting burned a little bit by trying to take this thing off. Again, it's not a good idea to use something short with these. These stoves get hot. Um, the hemostat that I have is a lot longer and gives me a, a longer reach. That has been about one minute, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove the lid and try to start this up. There's not much fuel in this bottle, and I think I've got some air on the line. Let me put some more air in the bottle to pressurize it. Now again, one of the advantages of having this chimney is that if you have a, a situation for whatever reason where you got a, a, a minor flare-up, you just put the lid back on and it contains it. It also retains more heat so that it, um, it will uh, preheat the burner additionally after the alcohol is burned off. I think things are beginning to straighten out. And I'll remove the chimney. and straighten out the legs, as would be the case for actual cooking. And put more air in the bottle. Now I should tell you that this is a 2.8 jet and as a result, it's going to have a lower output than the normal 3.5 jet that is used for white gas. But I keep it on these particular stoves primarily because of the uh, fact that I use uh, kerosene quite a lot. And the 2.8 jet is the only jet that I use for kerosene.